In this video, I'm going to show how to set up the CPX API. So this product over here, decentralized IO with a Codesys PLC, uh, in this case, a Festo PLC over Ethercat. So let me explain briefly the topology that I have here. Uh, this is my Festo PLC. This is my Ethercat connection here. Um, this is just going to my computer. The blue cable is going to my computer over TCP IP. Uh, on the PLC, on board the PLC, I have multiple I.O. In this case, I have 16 G digital input, a digital output, and so on, different modules, right? This is just the power supply over here. Uh, then from there, I, I go down over Ethercat, I go down to this module over here. This is an Ethercat module for the CPX API. This is the, the, main, the main product that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, from here, from this module, I branch out to multiple mo multiple other modules, uh, IO modules in this case. So from here, I go to the next module next to it. This is a four digital input for digital output. Then from here, I daisy chain with these cables. I daisy chain to this other module right here. This is an eight digital input. And then I keep daisy chaining between them. So from, from this one to this one, from this one to this one, and then from here, I go to this other module over here. This is also for digital input, for digital output. And then the very last module, this one right here, this is a for IOLink master module. Um, with this IOLink master module, I'm controlling this valve manifold and also this uh, la uh, light, light stack over here. So that's in general the topology of what I have here. Now let's take a look at the software. So I'm going to create a new project here, file, new project. I'm going to select the kind of control that I'm, the controller that I'm using. I'm going to look for a uh, folder where to save it. In this case, CPX API, programming, Ethercat. Okay, and I'm just gonna call this CPX API EC for Ethercat. And then underscore uh, temporary. Uh, CPX E, okay. Now the next step is it's going to ask me what kind of CPXE controller you're working with. So I know that I'm working with this one, CPXE CC M1PN. I'm going to select just for now continuous function chart and I'm going to add an Ethercat master. All right, okay. So that's it. My project is opening now. There we go. Everything is loading and should be closed, there we go. So now I double click on the device. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a gateway or actually the gateway is already there. So I'm just gonna scan that gateway and I immediately see my CPX uh, PLC there, CPX ECC. Okay, double click on it to make it the active path for my project and then I'm just gonna save it for, save my project for now. Perfect. Um, okay, I'm going to close this and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check for the Remember that I told you right here uh, I have a certain IO on board. So this is configurable So I could add more slices to it or remove slices. So since it is configurable I want to see what's the actual configuration in it. So for this I'm going to click here CPX E system right here and then actual configuration right here and then scan. And since I already established my uh, my path um, here, I can just scan, and this immediately pulls the configuration from the actual hardware and tells me this is what you have connected to it. Okay, perfect, so I'm gonna hit apply, and that should be it. Uh, it's loading, there we go. So now, what this did is it brought in all of these different slices. So you can see there on the program, it says 16 digital inputs, which I can confirm it's this first card here. And then the next one, it says eight digital outputs here in the hardware, and you can see eight digital outputs and et cetera, et cetera, for the next, uh, um, for the next IO cards. I'm not gonna work on those today, so I can just ignore that for now. I actually want to focus on this portion here in the bottom, right? So the um, decentralized IO that I'm going to be controlling over Ethercat. So let's do that. Um, under my Ethercat master, I'm going to add a device. Actually, no, I'm just gonna scan for devices. So I'm going to click scan for devices. And now this is beautiful. 
Now, as soon as I click scan for devices, it immediately picks up all the devices that I have connected to it. So you can see the very first module, it says it is uh, CPX API ECM12. And actually, if I look here on this module, on the side, that's what it says on the, printed on the module. This is the, the, that first module. And then the next module is a four digital input, four digital output, as you can see there on the program. And then the next one, it's an eight digital input and so on. You can see everything is pre-mapped pre for me. Even the very last one, which I told you was an, was an ILA master, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna click copy to project. So as soon as I click scan, all of the devices are brought in. So you can see here, I have uh, all of my different devices already in my project tree. So what I can do is I can log in. Uh, yes, download this application. And now I'm downloading my project. F5. Uh, perfect, so this is really good. Everything is in green. It says that everything is being scanned and I can, uh, I should have communication to, to these modules. Now, I mentioned that I have a push button on one of the modules uh, connected to it, right? So. I, and that one is this one, actually, the third module. So I can see the status of that input, but first I gotta adjust something here. Let me show you. If I press that button right now, you can see that it doesn't switch from false to true on my Codices project, uh, I think. Yeah, it's not switching. I, I, and I guess I don't see the update. Why? Because Codices has here um, an option that says always update variables. And right now it's using this option. You can change it from here. Usually what uh, the other thing that I do is you can go back to the device, click on PLC settings right here, and then you can change this. Always update variables. You can change this, change this to, uh, for example, enable to. And then yes, we close this and we download again. And now we should see the change whenever it happens. So now I'm going to press the button. And I don't know if you can see it here. Actually, let me raise this so you can probably see the LED better. Uh, oh, it's gonna be on the side, right there. You see the LED on the hardware, and you also see the, LED, the the signal on codices. All right, perfect. So that means that I'm actually um, getting that signal on the software. Uh, I could also test my outputs, so let's do that. I'm going to select this module, which is this one over here, and I'm going to go to IO mapping, and I'm going to set those outputs to true, so you can see them switching on to true. Awesome, so I have some communication there. I can close this and I can close this. Okay, so now if I wanted to switch on some of these coils on this manifold, what I would have to do is use the bytes on this IO-Link master right here. Uh, because this cable on the manifold is connected, this port is connected over IO-Link to actually to this very first port. Uh, the first thing that I have to do, though, is I have to enable the IO-Link ports. Right now, they are disabled by default. So if I, let me bring this out of here so I can turn it around. You can see, you see these LEDs right here? These ones are off. So I have to enable those ports. How do I do that? It's pretty easy to do that in, in codices. Let me show you. I'm going to log out. And I'm going to double click on the on the head module for EtherCAT on the slate, right? CPX API EC. I'm going to double click on that, and then I'm going to open the startup parameters. Now inside of the, st the startup parameters, I'm going to add a couple of parameters, and you'll see them here. I'm going to go to the this one. This is my IOLing module module parameter. Okay, open that one. And then on the port zero, where my, my valve manifold is at, I'm going to select this parameter. I'm going to say set to auto start. Do that for port zero. And I'm going to do this exactly the same thing with port one. 
that way next time I download and I start this this module it's going to auto start the IOLink communication so click OK and do that with the port number one module parameter port one IOLink auto start OK now I want you to notice let me see if you can see from there uh, you should be able to see uh, hold on let me turn this sideways like like that yeah you can see it from there um, so I'm going to log in yes and then I want you to see that as soon as I put it in run now those two ports are enabled in IOLink mode right so those two are enabled in IOLink mode perfect I can close this now and I can go back to my IOLink device master here IOLink master and I can go to the mapping exactly uh, here actually I already have this open but if you go to the mapping like here like this I know that on the very first port so port 0 I have that manifold connected right and on the first byte this one right here I should be able to switch on some coils I'm going to switch them all on there we go so now I have full control over the coils 55 that's great and course I could do coil by coil if I wanted to first coil second coil third coil and so on perfect now same thing with that um, stack light that I have there let me just bring up that user manual that I was looking at earlier so if I go to the stack light and I look at the data sheet for the stack light it says that if I switch on um, on byte number three, let me make this bigger. Byte number three, there is a uh, segment mode, or maybe we can run this one. Run light mode. Byte three, bit two. Let's do that. Uh, so that's connected on port one. Byte three. <clears throat> what was it? Byte three, bit two. If we switch this one on. Okay. And then we gotta switch on a color, I believe. So now we switch on a color, for example, on byte zero, we set this to, uh, let's say blue, which would be the third bit. So this one, byte zero, bit two, byte zero, bit two, this one right here. So now I have control over IO link of that stack light. So as you can see, it is very easy to set up um, the, this topology right here. Oops, this topology right here. So all of these devices were automatically scanned. If I added more devices, they will, they will appear there. Um, so you can have up to 500 of these modules and, uh, and you, you don't have the need to go through every single one of them to register it. It, register it in your programming environment so it's pretty easy to use I really recommend that you look into them um, the other thing that I was going to mention is they as you already noticed they are very compact you can see this one here very compact very lightweight and this is the uh, you can find them on the Festo website like this CPX API and then something in this case for DI for the O for for digital inputs for digital outputs M8 connection and that's it pretty uh, pretty pretty neat pretty neat product that you can use and you see all around the different machines in manufacturing all right thank you for watching